In this episode, I have a Rotel RCD940 single disc CD player that goes back to about, I think, 1997 vintage. Anyway, this one uh, was given to me, and uh, it's pretty gross inside. It came from a smoker's home. You're going to see this thing just disgusting inside, but it doesn't play. And uh, let's see if I can get this one working. I'm not completely hopeful it'll work, but let's check it out. As you can see, this obviously came out of a smoker's house because the the white plastic has turned yellow, just like the owner's lungs, I'm sure. So I'm sure this thing's full of smoke and it's probably not going to work, but let's uh, plug it in and try it first. So I'll turn on the power. You can barely see the fluorescent display. It is so cloudy. Oh, it had a CD in it. Cool. I love it when people give me CD players and they got a CD in them. We'll try this disc and see if it plays. And it's doing nothing. Oh, I can hear something spinning. And it just kicked out my disc. Spinning backwards, I might add. screws on the bottom on this thing yep this came from actually the guy that gave me this gave me the gave me a bunch of stuff gave me uh, that nice techniques tape deck that looked immaculate inside and the big uh, SB 7000 speakers came from the same fellow that gave me this I guess it was kept in a different room because this one here is pretty, uh, pretty gross inside. Check out the power transformer. Custom designed by and exclusively manufactured for Rotel Hi-Fi. So here's a look down to the top of this one. Open up the mechanism and check out the laser. Oh, the laser is stuck all the way at the end. You think maybe that might have something to do with the f why it doesn't work? Okay, that's the that's the one that operates the belt. Oh wait a minute, these might chuck the laser all the way to the end with the drawers open because it looks like the same mechanism that's controlling it. Let me just try loading a disc and see if the laser comes back. Yep, I think that's what it does. Yeah, the laser moves forward. If I take the disc out now, you'll see that the laser is where it's supposed to be, right at the front here. But the lens looks really cloudy. So um, I think the first thing I'll do is I'll clean the lens. So if it, when I eject it, what happens is the laser moves to the end and then it kicks the disc, which is kind of a unique way of doing it. You see this lever here unlock, unlocks the, or locks the laser and kicks the, the mechanism out. So one motor opens and closes the disc tray as well as moves the laser back and forth. If I want to take this top piece off, I just have to remove this screw and then we'll see how disgusting the laser is. Okay, now I can remove this and well, You can see how, how clouded that lens is. The thing is, it's not just on the outside. The internal optics will also be clouded. So I can wipe off the, the film on the outside. The, the problem is trying to get the internal optics clean. Because when these things were used in a smoky environment, the, um, the optics tempted to get really quite cloudy and uh, then they can't can't pick up the laser it scatters the beam and there's not a lot you can do when the internal optics when there's inside this there's a mirror right that the laser is emitted from a laser diode and it 
it hits a mirror, which is a semi-reflective mirror. So the laser is actually usually in the bottom, and it shines straight up. And there's a there's a dissecting mirror at a 45 degree angle. And the laser beam shines up through that mirror and up to the disc. And on the way back down, when it hits the mirror, it's reflected 90 degrees over to the side spot detectors that that read the pickup. This is a Sanyo pickup incidentally see I know that because it says Sanyo on the side and SFP1 is the pickup that Rotel used but unfortunately I, I just have a feeling that uh, we're gonna find that the laser on this one is just too badly shot because it's all contaminated and that'll mean that this unit won't be really repairable Unless I can find a pickup for a song. It's a single disc player, so it's not worth spending a lot of money on. Spinning in the right direction now. Is it going to read anything? We'll see if it starts if it plays. Oh, I might help if I if I plug the audio line in. Maybe it's actually playing. Then again, maybe not. Nope, it's not. It's trying. It's spinning. But it's not playing anything. Oh, start playing. We can check the gain on this thing. I can check the focus gain and so forth. See whether I can make it uh, any better. It's got this crappy circuit glue on here too. This stuff here. Oh, I didn't even have to breathe on it. the RF test point on here. I think the RF test point is right down here. Let me just grab my scope and we'll, we'll take a look at that and see whether I, I can get any more RF out of it. Okay, that's the test point there, HF. I can now see the eye pattern nice and clear on my scope. Well, what there is of it, I'll show you it here and I'll see if I can get it any better. Mainly the focus gain, of course, is going to stop now. As soon as I start to talk, it was playing there for a minute. Focus gain and uh, maybe a bit of the tracking um, tracking gain here, ever so slightly, just to try and get the eye pattern maximized. Let's just put this stamped disc in and see if it fares any better, because typically master discs tend to uh, work a lot better than CDRs. CDRs are hard to play back, especially for the older 
the older machines generally had a lot more problems with the CDRs, especially these not very reflective ones. So if I show you the scope on this, look at the eye pattern here, it's beautiful. Fantastic, look how clear it is. A little bit of jitter, but that's okay. We're looking at the eye pattern, we're looking at the diamond here. This is what you want to see, you want to see a nice clear eye pattern here and that, that is about as good as I've seen it off this unit. It's beautiful. This is where a high resolution scope, high resolution analog scope really comes in handy when you're doing alignment on these old CD players. Uh, now I did the alignment on that CDR and I had it actually, yeah I was playing, I wasn't playing well but it was playing, I'll try a different type of CDR on it too but I'm going to let this just play, I can't obviously let this thing play for any length of time because uh, I'll get nailed with copyright on this for sure. This is a uh, Pasha Belly Cannon that's going to start playing here in a second so I had to cut this off, but I want to let this play and just see if this disc will play through. Well, it's still playing. It's into the fourth track now. It hasn't skipped the beat yet. I wonder if it's just not going to play CDRs. Some of these old units had a real problem with CDRs. I've just shut down the volume here on this thing so I don't get uh, busted. But I look on here and there's a date, March 11th, 97, stuck on this IC, which has got a sticker over top of the, for top of the IC itself, for top of the number. I'm just wondering what it is. To Sanyo. I'm sure that Sanyo made this entire player and Rotel just stuck their name on it. What do you bet if I pull this sticker off it says Sanyo underneath it? Um, yeah, the control I the main control I see is a Sanyo. They just stick a sticker over it, like as if that's gonna stop anybody from finding out who made this thing. So is this to uh, tell people that hey, you know. We didn't build this machine, we just kind of designed it and they made it for us. Maybe that's the case. They got Sanyo to contract their machine and for them and they designed it. But uh, it appears to be a Sanyo. At least the drive IC or the main IC is Sanyo and the optical pickup is Sanyo. And uh, this thing's still playing here. Let's go to the next track. Searching tracks out, okay. The eye pattern is looking good. We got birds. And... So track eight. Stream. Track 9. I mean, this thing's playing this disc. It's not skipping a beat on this. I'm just going to try my other. I've got this one, which is a different brand. This is a, a, a Fuji. This is a Fuji branded disc, which is a much darker recording layer, and they typically. CD players that have trouble with the more modern disc tend to work fine with these older discs. I'm just curious as to whether this disc is going to play. Well, I'll let this play and see how this one plays, but uh, eye pattern looks fine on this one. Take a look. So that's this Fuji. No skipping. I go back to this piece of crap, Staples Special. This is how all the new ones are. This is like a 50, is it 52 times? Yeah, 52 times right speed. I go back to that one just for shits and giggles. And we'll see how crappy the, uh, how crappy the eye pattern is on this one. Just for comparison. See how low it is? And it's just, it's not even playing. It's not even playing. It hasn't read the table of contents yet, and it just stopped. We'll try playing it again. Then I go back to this this one here, this dark one, and this just proves a very important point about CDs that I've been saying for years. The older ones that were like you know eight times or twelve times that were dark, 
The original ones were gold, but they cost too much to make because they actually had gold leaf on them. They were a, a, a layer of gold instead of silver material. Instead of aluminum, they were sprayed with gold. Um, the original CDRs were dark, right? And what they did was that they changed the dye layer and made it more sensitive so that they could be written at a faster speed made them more sensitive. The problem is they don't have the contrast that the older ones do when they're reflecting because how a CDR works by comparison to a, a stamped disc, which is what this is, okay, a stamped disc, there's actually pits that are pressed into the actual polycarbonate um, material. That they, they, when they cut the master with the laser at the mastering factory, they make a stamper and they stamp the disc and it has pits in there, pits and lands that reflect the laser back. And as the laser is being reflected, it's either in focus or out of focus. And that's what produces the one or the zero. That's on pre-made discs. On CDRs, it's a wobble groove. That's why one of the reasons you see the you see the fluctuation slightly because the groove itself is actually wobbling. That's why you get the, the fluctuations every revolution on a CDR because the groove itself is not spiral it wobbles slightly that's so the laser can track it but there are no pits and lands on a CDR it's just a wobble groove and it has a a, a, a organic dye layer that is sprayed on and that's the color that you see and when the recording laser burns it the recording laser is modulated and it pulses up and down in terms of power and as it pulses up and down in terms of power, it will burn away the dye layer, which is what causes your contrast. So now on playback, where the dye layer hasn't been burned, it's a reduced output, and where the dye layer has been burned, it's re full, full reflection. So the laser that's getting reflected back, it sees the reflective coating and it reflects back a higher level of reflection than where there's dye. And one of these ones here, the dye layer is not as dark, so you don't get the same uh, level of contrast that you do from these older ones. So these older ones are generally a lot more compatible with older CD players than the new ones. The newer ones work fine for a lot of the newer CD players, uh, which used a much more sensitive laser. But the older ones, as I put this old disc back in here, I shall see. Now watch it make a liar out of me. Look at the level right and it's gonna play so look at our levels here those are our levels now I'll change that disc again and I'll go back to the other disc and we'll look at the difference in the levels now this is the other CDR oh this time it's good oh that's not that's the stamp disc oh, that's the factory stamp disc but you can see the levels are about the same, right? We'll go back to the CDR, the one that plays. So this is the Fuji CDR. And again, not quite the same levels, it's a little bit lower, but it's still, it's still pretty good. You can see from here, right up to here, And now I'll go to the one that won't play, the Staples branded disc. You notice the difference in the level, okay? And it's not going to play. That's the reflectivity of the dye layer. Back to the good CDR. There's our levels. See the difference? So that is the difference between the different types of CDRs. I'm going to let this play with this CDR and make sure that it continues to play. But keep that in mind if you're burning anything onto an audio CD. If you can find some of the old CDs, then uh, you're much better off. About 20 odd years ago, maybe more now, when we got the, what they call it, the Canadian Private Copyright copying act or whatever it was whenever it came in uh, it was back in the in the 90s I believe anyway 
they started imposing a big tax on CDs. Not on DVDRs, just CDRs. CDRs that were designed for computer use had a tax of 45 cents. I think it was 45 cents. It was added to the cost of each disc. It was ridiculous. They didn't give a crap whether you were copying music on it or whether you were copying your family photos from your digital camera. Every blank CD ended up with this massive bloody tax which cost as much as the disc. And it put the price of discs through the roof. They didn't apply this to DVD, even though DVDs are more versatile and you could copy movies onto them. It was just the recording act and they put a tax on any type of media that you could record audio to. So cassettes got a tax. CDs got a tax. The music CDs, the ones that were CDR music that were designed for the standalone CD players, they got really hit with a tax. I think it was, was like twice as much as what it was for the computer ones. I never had one of those machines, so I don't know. I never paid the tax. But um, they taxed the crap out of out of all audio material, all audio media. Mini discs got taxed. Open reel tape got taxed. Cassette tapes got taxed. DAT tapes got taxed. Any media that you could record audio to, and that tax is here to this day. Some stores hide it in the price of the blank discs. Other ones, such as London Drugs, they don't hide it. They add it at the till. So you go and you, go and you see a, a spindle of CDRs, for example, for 1995. And, oh, wow, 1995, and you get to the till, and it's like 50 bucks, and you go, pardon? So, oh yeah, well, there's tax per disc added at the till. Ridiculous. Uh, anyway, before the tax hit, because I was doing a lot of stuff on CDs. When I was in the video business, I was doing a lot of stuff on CDs. Not so much, I wasn't I wasn't distributing a lot of stuff on CDs, but I was using CDs as a backup medium because the uh, DVDs were really expensive back then. A blank DVD cost, well, they used to cost like 20 bucks a pop. And blank CDs were about a dollar. So I would back up my projects onto CDs because most of the stuff, a lot of the stuff I was doing, I wasn't doing a lot of long form stuff. I was doing a lot of videos that were, you know, five or ten minutes long, uh, a lot of promo, a lot of demo videos and stuff where I could put the source files, they would fit on, you know, two or three uh, CDRs. So I would back up my, my source files from my camera. When I was done working on a project, I wasn't leaving it sitting on my hard drive. I would back it up onto CDRs and then I would have it in case the client came back down the road and said, hey, you know that project we were working on there a year ago? Uh, we want to make some changes. Oh, we've moved. We want to put our new address on there, right? Type of thing. So I would keep a, I would keep a copy of the files on uh, after I digitized them on, the, on a CD. So I used to buy these things in quantity. Plus I put all my photos and stuff on CDRs. So before the tax came in, I went out and I bought a couple hundred of these Fuji ones, really good ones. And uh, I've been sitting on them ever since, and I don't use them very often. I use them for special things. I use them for when I want to make a CD to listen to in the car. I still have a CD player in my car. And I listen to them if I, if I want to put something onto CD to play on my audio CD player, and that's about it. But I keep them. I keep them for special projects because, well, as you can see, these crappy ones don't work very well. And then what I use this crap for is if someone brings me a, a cassette tape or something that they want put on a CD because I get people that bring me that, well, they get them on these. I, 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 keep, the, uh, I keep the good ones for my own use. And there's the reason I keep the good ones for my own use because you'll get CD players that will not play these discs and they'll play those ones perfectly. But the thing is you can't buy these discs anymore that you can't buy these 8 and 12 times recording discs they're all 52 times and uh, that's the problem you run into is these ones you can burn them in a matter of about a minute but what good is burning them in a matter of a minute if uh, half the CD players especially the older ones can't play them anyway I'm gonna let this thing play I think the CD player is gonna be okay all I had to do is clean the lens off it and uh, 
seems like it's going to play. I'm going to let it play and just see what happens. One thing I certainly can say about using these crappy discs is if you're aligning a, an older CD player like this that's got analog adjustments, because the, the newer ones are all a DSP, so there's no adjustments necessary. But you get one of these older ones that got analog adjustments. If you can get your eye pattern the best it can be on one of these crappy CDRs, even if it won't play properly, like this one. If you can get your eye pattern the best that it can be on one of these, it's gonna work on everything else because, as I say and as I showed on here, these ones are very difficult to actually get to play back at all. So if you can get one of these ones to play, then anything else is gonna be just perfect as it has been so far. Watch as it changes tracks. There goes, there's the index zero. And then when the next track starts, we're up to track six here. So far, no skipping. Sounding pretty good. So there it is, it's been playing now for hours. This disc is replayed about uh, six times now since I started it. it. Hasn't skipped the beat, hasn't skipped once. I will say that this one is, uh, I'm pretty confident this one's a success. That is unless someone tries to use these garbage discs. It's not gonna play these garbage discs just like it won't play CDRW discs either. But uh, stick with good quality, you know, pressed discs or good quality CDRs from the past and there should be no problem with this one. I just noticed something, watch this. If I get my hand near the... I'll tell you what's causing that. Of course, that's my 410 milliwatt AM transmitter that I use for testing radios. It's being picked up by the uh, pickup cable from the optical pickup. Transmitter off now. Okay, nothing, no problem. Ooh, look, no problem. No problem, I can stick my hand in here, nothing happens. Well, that's when I turn my AM transmitter back on. Oh, look, it stops. I wonder if I turn my AM transmitter off and try this disc that doesn't play, I wonder if it'll play that disc now. So the eye pattern is now looking a lot better. back down here so you guys can see when I stop it it is in fact playing the staples disc that wasn't playing before so got everything working it's just that uh, with the AM transmitter running it's because the signal off this disc is lower than it is off of the other ones due to the lower reflectivity that was causing problems reading and all I had to do was turn off that little AM transmitter, which I kind of found actually by accident. And it starts playing. There. So, player fixed. Even on the worst disc. But if you do your alignment to one of these discs here, you'll generally have the best results. That or a defect disc. They used to sell, I don't have one, but they used to sell defect discs that actually had defects on them. And they, they were used to do the alignment and that way you could it, they had burst errors and stuff built into the disc but uh, these these uh, 52 times discs as bad as they are they usually can be made to play just with careful adjustments if you want to see something that's absolutely disgusting that is absolutely disgusting that is the tar and nicotine that is coming off the front of the thing. That's gross. Let me get some Windex and we'll clean this up, see if I can get this display looking a little bit better. This thing is just absolutely disgusting. Let's see how this cleans up. Oh, this is just gross. Just disgusting. This is just the glass, okay? It's gross.
this is the part of the job I really despised when I was running the service department. I had to clean, I had to work on equipment that people lived in, in pigsties, basically. And their house might have been clean, but if you had a smoker or two in the house, everything was just disgusting. Ugh. You know, it, all the equipment was, it all smelled of smoke, and it just, this is what everything was, and if it's a TV, there was basically fuzz growing on the, uh, the picture tube. I should probably uh, open this thing up and clean the glass on the inside. But you see, this is going to be all over the lens too. Yes, I was able to clean the, uh, the top side of the lens, but I, I couldn't clean the interior part of the lens, so that's going to be... That's going to be reducing the uh, the overall signal level, probably contributing to it not being able to read some types of CDRs. There it is. Oh, good. I don't have to take anything off other than this power light. Okay, now I can clean the display and the inside of the uh, glass. What do you know? You can actually read the display now. If I hit the uh, time button, it'll give me the time. That was so dim before you couldn't read it. it was just the glass was just filthy. Much better. Okay, I think I can put this thing together now and... Uh, send it on its way and by that I mean sell it because well maybe this is one to hang on to but I've got a I've got a couple of CD players but I always run into people that are looking for CD players so I might be able to sell this one being a Rotel as opposed to say a different brand I might actually get some money for it I might actually make 50 or 75 bucks on one like this this one's working. It wasn't working when I started. It's working now. I'm happy. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.